No, it's not a green screen. I was lying. Sometimes it is though, but not today. In today's video, we're taking a look at the latest Air Jordan sneaker, the Air Jordan 36, talking about the possibility of a reflective 350 V2 Beluga, and also talking about the new colorways of the Air Jordan 1 Dior's. All of that and more to come in today's video. What's up everybody? I'm Seth Fowler and this is Weekly Heat. So it's been a minute since we last did Weekly Heat, and that's mainly because last week there wasn't a huge amount of news. This week though, or I guess the end of this week, beginning of next week, there's a bunch of news, and some of it is kinda crazy. So without further ado, I won't even ask you guys to subscribe, although you probably should. Let's jump right into it. Starting things off, we finally have official images of the upcoming Off-White Air Force One Low in the University Gold colorway. Now to be fair, there's not a lot of news in this story. I just wanted to show you guys these images because the shoe really does look significantly better in these images, and that's really usually the case when it comes to official images. Official images are either renders or pictures taken by very professional photographers versus someone with a cell phone inside of a factory. So the shoes always look 10 times better in these images. And while I think these images don't really have a bearing on whether these shoes end up selling out or not, because at the end of the day they're stupid limited and they're off-white collaborations, I still think they give us a much better idea of how these shoes will end up looking. Now first glance, I've got to be honest, this shoe looks a lot more yellow than I expected. And I know that sounds stupid because at the end of the day it is a yellow colorway, but if you look at some of the older renders and you look at some of the leaked photos of this shoe, it really did have sort of a gold tinge to it. And I don't mean metallic gold, I mean sort of like a more orangey yellow. From these images, these shoes look yellow, and I mean canary yellow, banana yellow, bright sunshine in the sky yellow, well that's more like a white. You get the picture, it's a very yellow pair of sneakers and that yellow is actually accented by a metallic silver Nike swoosh. Now in these images, it doesn't look metallic silver right off the bat, in fact at first I thought it was white, but if you look closer at all of the images, you'll see that there is some metallic hit shown off in these images and when you actually get the sneakers in hand, I'm sure it's gonna look like every other metallic Nike swoosh on a pair of off-white sneakers. And the one last thing that I wanted to cover before we moved on to the next pair of sneakers was the fact that this shoe comes with a bright yellow, matching zip tie. In a lot of cases, the zip tie comes in a contrasting color, but it appears that on these shoes, it actually comes in the same shade of yellow as the rest of the sneaker. Not really that important, just thought it was an interesting detail and I figured I'd share it with you guys. Next up, it looks like the rumors were true and there actually is two different colorways of the Union LA Air Jordan 4 30th anniversaries releasing. Now to be fair, unlike the previous Union LA Air Jordan 4s that dropped, the colorways are much more similar. In fact, on the previous version, you had a black pair and a pink pair. This time around, you pretty much have two tan pairs. Okay, maybe that's oversimplifying the situation. One of them is more of like a deep yellow color with some purple accents, and then one of them's actually a tan pair, but uh, they both look pretty similar, and the shades of color that they used are in the same sort of family. The official names of the two colorways are Desert Moss and Taupe Haze, which is kind of interesting because we already had a Taupe Haze colorway release earlier this year. I mean, sure, the shoe does come in a shade of taupe, so I get that, but you'd think they could come up with another adjective to describe the taupe, like dirty taupe. I don't know, if I wasn't trying to ward off sleep with like five different Red Bulls, I probably could have come up with something better than Taupe Haze. But personally, if I had to choose one, I would definitely go with the Taupe colorway over that Desert Moss colorway because I just don't love that sort of washed out yellow purple thing going on. It's just not really for me. To be fair though, it is a more original colorway than the Taupe Haze colorway, but again, I'd still prefer to have that light brown colored shoe. I just think it looks nicer. Now, if you're like me and you're trying to grab a pair of these for yourself, they should both retail for 250 bucks. And apparently Union LA has confirmed that they're coming out sometime in June, which at this point is literally like tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but the next day. For the next story, it looks like this year for Halloween, we're getting a glow in the dark Nike Dunk Low. So apparently not only is Nike releasing a Dunk Low for Halloween this year, they're also giving it some glow in the dark accents, namely the outsole and some eyes on the upper of the shoe. This picture obviously comes from from Pirates on Instagram and shows off a rendering of what the shoe could look like based on the leaks. According to these images, it looks like the upper of the shoe comes in sort of an off-white or cream-colored leather, accented by sort of a dark gray overlay as well as a bright orange Nike swoosh. The midsole seems to come in a slightly darker shade of cream, accented by a semi-translucent light cream-colored but glow-in-the-dark outsole. The shoe itself looks fine. I don't personally love the eyes on the upper. There's just something about them that creeps me out, and I guess that makes sense because it's a Halloween themed sneaker, but it's really not for me. But as of right now, that's pretty much all we know about this pair of sneakers. But of course, expect these sneakers to drop sometime around Halloween because at the end of the day, they are a Halloween themed sneaker. Next up, Nike is dropping a brand new pair of blazers which look eerily similar to the off-white Nike blazers. So apparently these blazer mids have been dubbed the move to zero blazer mids because they use some recycled materials, namely in the outsole where they use Nike Regrind, which is ground up Nike outsoles. But I think it's fairly obvious to see the resemblance between this 
shoe and the off-white Nike blazer, which at the end of the day isn't really that big of a deal because Nike did make the off-white Nike blazer, but it's easy to see this thinly veiled attempt at making one of their GR shoes sell out. First off, the shoe comes in a very similar colorway to the first off-white Nike blazer. In addition to that, you also got a black Nike swoosh and a semi-translucent outsole, and the materials used on the upper are eerily familiar. And again, it's their sneaker, they can do whatever they want with it, and honestly, I do think the sneaker looks good, but uh... You can see what they were going for. The colorway of the upper itself is a little bit more dulled down than the previous off-white Nike blazer, which is kind of interesting because it does look like what the original off-white Nike blazers look like now, after they've aged a little bit. I don't know, I guess it's not that important of a story. I just thought it was kind of interesting. And if you guys would like to grab one of these move to zero Nike blazer mids, they should be dropping sometime in the very near future for just a hundred bucks, which is surprisingly reasonable. So after months of waiting, it could even be a year by this point, it looks like we're finally getting a release date for the Yeezy Gap collection. A while back, Kanye West and Gap signed what I believe was a 10 year deal for Kanye West and Gap to release their own collaborations to be sold in Gap stores. Now these collaborations are not limited to just clothing, but also sneakers. In particular, the Yeezy Foam Runner is supposed to have a couple different Gap exclusive iterations. And apparently the reason Kanye West is so interested in this collaboration is because he grew up wearing Gap clothing. And if you have been waiting to grab something from the Yeezy Gap collection, apparently you really don't have much longer to wait because the collection is slated to drop at the end of June. What makes this story a little bit more interesting is that Gap has been closing down a lot of their physical brick and mortar stores, which means that a lot of his stuff is probably going to be selling mainly online, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing because more people can get it. Bad thing because there'll be a lot of bots and actually less people can get it. So I guess it's kind of, I don't know, it seems like an all bad thing the more that I think about it. But regardless, this stuff is releasing near the end of June. And if you want to grab it, that's when this stuff is supposed to come out. They haven't said what's coming out just yet, but the first pieces from the collection should be dropping very, very soon. Have you had enough of the Easy Quantum yet? Well, apparently Kanye West and Adidas don't think you have because they're releasing a brand new colorway called the Vivid Orange. It's funny that they're just barraging us with colorways because when we first saw leaks of this shoe, it was like two years before the sneaker actually came out, and now that it's out, it won't stop coming out. And it seems like the colorways of this shoe are just getting progressively worse and worse, and I know I'm always hard on Yeezy colorways, I, I, I know, but at the same time, man, look at that, look at this shoe. It looks like... And it actually looks a lot like the Fear of Gods. But at the same time, I didn't like that colorway either. So I can I cannot like this colorway and not be a hypocrite. <laughs> so as you can tell from this image, the Vivid Orange Quantums come in Vivid Orange. It's pretty much all orange colorway of the shoe. And what's interesting about this highlighter orange colorway is that it still features that same sort of prime knit pattern on the upper in like a black or dark gray. But uh, the rest of the shoe, all the same shade of orange. I honestly don't know why they keep releasing this shoe. The demand can't be that crazy. The colorways that they've been releasing of the shoe recently haven't really sold out, so I don't know why they keep dropping these. Like, are they making that much money on them? And as we heard in the last Sitter Cell video from DP, when an Adidas Yeezy sneaker doesn't sell out, Adidas kind of makes it magically disappear and says that it sells out, but they really just have a storeroom of them somewhere that they restock. Like this year, we're getting like 18 different styles of Yeezys restocked. It's nuts. I'm not really feeling this one, and I don't think anyone else really is either. So images have just leaked of a brand new Adidas Pharrell sneaker called the Pharrell Sechona, and apparently these images that have leaked are of a friends and family colorway. Obviously, this friends and family colorway comes in an all green makeup, and the sneaker itself does look a lot like some of Pharrell's previous basketball sneakers, which leads me to believe that this might also be a basketball sneaker, and honestly, I'm kind of here for it. It's not like the most out there look, like it's not that crazy of a sneaker, but it's a brand new Adidas Pharrell silhouette, and those are always exciting, especially when it's a shoe that really grabs people's attention, like the Pharrell. Chona seems to be. Is that how you say it? In addition to the all green colorway, the shoe also features the word human race printed on the midfoot in white. And it also seems like it has a full length boost midsole, which is always a good thing. However, it does seem like it's fully encased, which means it's not going to compress as much as like an ultra boost. So it might not be as comfortable as something like an ultra boost, but you can pretty much always guarantee that whenever you pair a knit upper with a boost midsole, it's going to be a very comfortable shoe. So I'd expect nothing less out of this sneaker. Now, like I said before, this colorway is a friends and family exclusive, but I wouldn't be surprised if the silhouette itself ends up releasing sometime in the near future, especially since we're getting images of it, but you never know. We'll just have to wait and see. Next up, we've got some images of the brand new upcoming Air Jordan 36, Jordan Brand's latest performance model. Now, these images are of Jason Tatum wearing the shoe when he was getting blown out by the Nets. It's been just a bloodbath for the Celtics, and I can't lie, I can't say that I feel bad about it because I hate the Celtics, but at the same time, the Sixers are probably going to have to play the Nets in the playoffs, huh? 
Man, the Eastern Conference Finals are really gonna suck for a lot of Nets fans out there who are hoping that the Nets would make it to the finals, but it's not gonna happen. Sorry guys. So the Air Jordan 36 seems to be an iterative improvement on the Air Jordan 35. While visually it does look relatively different from that sneaker, I'm sure tech-wise it's pretty similar. The most obvious detail on the shoe is that colorful contrasting line that runs across the midsole. I can't say that I love it, but it does make the shoe look more unique. And I also can't decide if I like this shoe better than the Air Jordan 35 or not. I actually really like the Air Jordan 35 visually and I wish I could have played in it, but again, like I said in my last video, I haven't really played basketball in like a year and a half, so I haven't had a chance to rock it yet, but um, the Air Jordan 36 is a cleaner, simpler look, and I guess for some people, that's a good thing. Now, I don't know if Jordan brand is still trying to take design cues from retro sneakers, like with the Air Jordan 31 that was supposed to look like the ones, the twos, which were supposed to look like the twos, um, all the way up to even the Air Jordan 35, which I guess has some Air Jordan 5 details. The Air Jordan 36, maybe has some Air Jordan 6 details. I can't really find them, but I'm sure they're in there somewhere. If you guys can find them, let me know in the comment section down below. Or maybe they just abandoned that idea completely. I have no idea. Either way, as soon as the Air Jordan 36 releases, or if Jordan Brand wants to send me a pair early, they haven't sent me a pair in a while, but if they wanted to send me the Air Jordan 36 early, I'll try and give you guys a review as soon as I possibly can. Next up, we've got a first look at a shoe that I've been heavily anticipating, and thank God, it looks exactly like the renderings, and I cannot believe it. And that shoe, obviously, is the patent leather Air Jordan 1 breads, which looks like a pair of Air Jordan 1 breads. It's crazy. So based on this leaked image, the Air Jordan 1 patent leather breads are essentially just a pair of Air Jordan 1 breads, but in patent leather. Now, obviously, I would just prefer if this shoe was just a standard pair of bread ones, but doesn't seem like that's gonna happen for a little bit, even though it's been five years since we got the last pair. And yes, I still do have a pair on ice, but at the same time, I don't know, I'd like to have a couple more pairs. I regret selling my third pair. I shouldn't have done that. But the good news is we now have visual confirmation that the patent leather breads are actually a pair of patent leather breads, which means I'm gonna have to start saving because I'm gonna buy like seven pairs of these. I've said a bunch of times in the past, I don't love patent leather shoes, but the Bread Air Jordan 1 is my favorite shoe of all time. So I will be buying a bunch of pairs of these. It's just happening. Unfortunately, for those of you who aren't able to get a pair, I'm gonna be somehow getting all my luck on the sneakers app right when these drop putting that energy out there, hoping that it manifests itself. And apparently there's already a release date for the patent leather bread ones, and that's apparently October 23rd. So we still have a couple months to wait, which is a good thing because again, I'm gonna have to start saving now. <laughs> After that, we've got some first images of Drake's latest collaboration with Nike, the Hot Step Air Terra Nocta. So over the last year, Drake and Nike have been working on their own sub-brand called Nocta, and so far we've had a couple different apparel releases, but no sneakers yet. But now it looks like things are changing, and we're finally getting a brand new silhouette, the Hot Step Air Terra Nocta, which is gonna be a brand new sneaker from both Drake and Nike, and I'm really excited to see this shoe in person. Based on these images, it looks like the Nocta Hot Step Air Terras come in an all-white leather upper with some sort of metal spiky details on the upper and a very Air Max outsole. And while it's not the craziest looking sneaker, it's clean. Like it's really, really clean and it's something that I might have to pick up. As I'm sure you've noticed, there's definitely been a resurgence in like 2000s style footwear and this definitely seems to be playing off of that pretty heavily. Now other than this first look and the price of $150, not much else is known about this pair of sneakers, but expect this shoe to be dropping sometime before fall 2021. So remember the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Beluga 1.0s, like the first 350 V2 to release? Of course you do, it's like the most popular 350 ever. Well, apparently they're making it reflective now, for some reason. So according to Yeezy Mafia, Adidas and Yeezy have decided to re-release the Beluga 1.0s, but now in a reflective variant, which is actually kind of interesting because they've been restocking a lot of different Yeezys, but for some reason, for the Belugas, they decided to release a reflective variant. Now, I don't actually know if this was the restock that everyone was talking about, and maybe we're not getting a standard pair of Beluga 1.0s anymore. Maybe this was always the Beluga 1.0s that Adidas sort of hinted at, but uh, Either way, I'm kind of down with it. I don't think the reflective yarn is gonna add that much to the overall look of the sneaker. In fact, I think it's actually gonna make the upper look less contrasty and less eye-catching, which is kind of unfortunate because usually when they add reflective thread to something, it kind of waters down the colorway because it sort of separates the colored threads from each other. So it could make the colorway a little bit less interesting than the original, but who knows? I mean, I'm always down for reflective, so we'll just have to wait and see when the shoe actually releases. These renderings do make the shoe look decent. It does look slightly 
slightly different from the standard Belugas, but at the end of the day, it's a reflective shoe, so of course it's already pretty different. Unsurprisingly, there is no release date for this sneaker just yet, but Yeezy Mafia is saying that this shoe should be dropping sometime around Christmas time of this year. And then the final story of the day is that it looks like we're not only getting one new colorway of Air Jordan 1 Dior's, but three. Apparently the three colorways of this shoe that are slated to release are a black and white colorway, a triple white colorway, and a Chicago colorway, which in my opinion will be by far the most popular of the three. Obviously the first and original colorway of the Dior Air Jordan 1's was a gray and a white, and it looks like rather than just restocking that colorway, they've decided to release three new colorways, which I think is probably a good thing. Personally, I prefer the white and black and the Chicago colorways to the original colorway, but I noticed online that a lot of people didn't seem to like these colorways as much, which is interesting because back when the first one came out, people really wanted a Chicago colorway, and now that a Chicago colorway might actually be coming out, people don't really want it as much. I don't really get it. People are fickle. At the end of the day, I'm stoked for these new colorways coming out. I would like to have a pair just to have. In fact, I'd probably even pay the $2,000 retail. I would definitely not pay resale for any of these shoes. $20,000 is way too much to be paying for a pair of sneakers, but of course the chances of actually grabbing a pair of these in any of these colorways is probably slim to none, so I'm not holding my breath. If you are, however, trying to grab a pair of these, which I think most people will be, apparently they should be dropping in the very near future. There's no release date yet, no one really has any real pictures of the shoes just yet, but according to houseofheat.co, they're coming out soon. But with that, we pretty much wrap up the entire video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on all of the stories that we talked about in today's Weekly Heat, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.